Well, I'm curious to know what some of the core values you're looking for in your employees are. But also I think what I'm hearing is very much in alignment with kind of our mastering power approach where we look at kind of this three-stage process in mastering responsible power, which is being receptive, reflective and responsive. Mm -hmm. And so also, have you ever worked with anyone that's just not receptive to anything that you want to bring to them as a leader? And therefore, is there ever any way to overcome it? Or do you just move on to find someone who is open and receptive? Um, I never like to give up on, on anybody. Um, however, um, be, long before I started my business, um, I, I, I worked out that people are ready for the truth when they're ready for the truth. But it's my responsibility to speak that truth regardless of whether they're ready for it or not. And I learned that lesson myself uh, many years ago when I overheard somebody say something about me. And this, and this is one of the reasons why I, I um, love feedback and I open myself up to feedback because what I heard, I, didn't, I heard it at the time, but it didn't, I didn't absorb it at the time. I absorbed it many months later, but it changed my life. So a particular situation, somebody was causing trouble at one of the venues I was looking at in Brixton. You know, I asked him to stop about two, three times. And then on the third time it got physical and, you know, I put him down and probably maybe did it a little bit more forceful than I needed to. And the person, I overheard this person who knew me before I got shot. was like, oh, Lex used to be a nice guy before he got shot. And I dismissed the other times like, but do you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, but around 10 months later, those I was by myself, no one around, no one to, no bravado necessary. And those words came back to me. And I said to myself, he's right. And that was 1996. And that was the start of me healing. Mm -hmm. And so what I, what I, what I do is I tell people the truth of what I see. Um, and I have a situ particular situation at the moment right now with a person who's quite egotistical um i use the word haughty with him because he looks down on others and thinks he's better than others with no actual evidence and he doesn't see his his um the areas of of improvement he's so focused on what he does well that he's not actually seeing that you're not doing this so well so i actually posed to pose a question to him this week which was if everybody on the team was doing what you were doing how would that affect the safety of the venue and then I, on a more positive note, it's like if everyone was doing what you do, what you do well, how would that affect the safety of the venue as well? So I gave him two poses. I'm just going to wait for him to, to see what he comes with and see how it affects him. So patience is, patience is, is very much important in help in trying to help other people improve and grow and patience in yourself as well for you to improve and grow. Without having patience with myself, I may have fallen and not allowed myself to, to get back up. Um, but there are occasions where somebody just doesn't get it and you have to let them go because they could be, if you leave them in your organization, they could erode the, the goodwill, the culture. Um, and the values that I look for in, in others is, one of them is actually, you gotta have some kind of love in you for, for people. Um, and I think it's one of the, the qualities that isn't really engendered in the security industry. Like, if you're working with people, you've got to like people, and you got to you got to have some form of love for people. But you shouldn't be working where you have to deal with people on a face to face basis. Just you know, go go and work in a in an office or something where there's no people around. For some organisations particularly sort of seeing that you're in the security industry i think the, the fact that you use the word love um uh you, you know some people would say yeah. hang on that doesn't kind of compute yeah. really mm -hmm. and certainly you know when we've been looking at how do we project ourselves what language do we use um there are organizations out there talking about love but uh it kind of closes it down for them mm -hmm. um, in some ways because a lot of people just say oh, you know uh, love that happens in the bedroom it doesn't it doesn't happen at, in uh, at work yeah. 
So um, it's really interesting that you're you use that word, mm -hmm. uh, and so perhaps say a little bit if you'd say a little bit more about that and and um, do you, you you in in the way that you describe yourself you, you you talk about love and that being a really important value and we'll hear what other ones you've got in a sec as well how how do you find that your customers your clients I don't know you call them clients or customers um, how, how do they react to that kind of mindset um, right okay so the security industry is a bit I was going to say strange, but it's not strange. It's it probably reflective of other industries as well, where language is, the language I use with the people I deal with might be stronger. To, it, it, the, the, the soft, wishy-washy stuff shuts people <laughs> down. But it's the, you know, I remember someone saying to me um, years ago, oh, that's cheesy. And I said, yeah, love is cheesy. Doesn't mean it's not needed. Um, doesn't mean it's not important. You know, but when you look at love and what, and you break it down, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's cheesy stuff. You know, that's why any love stuff is romance. They're cheesy movies. You know, when you, when you look at romance stuff, but love love is something that when when applied and used in the correct manner is powerful. So the power of it is what matters. Um, and I introduce it to my guys. My not maybe calling it love, although. Um, I I do use it in a set. I use it in a sense of when I'm setting up my teams, and sometimes there's friction in the teams, and I'm like, look, guys, um, we have to remember this: we're a family, and so we might not always like each other, but we always love each other. And uh, they they really take into that. They like that um, because it it really frames it. It's like, yes, I'm not going to like my colleague all the time, but I will have my colleagues back all the time. I will look out for my colleague all the time. I will make sure that they're okay because. You know, there's a deeper connection going on, so it's it's interesting. I think maybe people are more ready for it now than in the past. And my my um, my introducing love into the security um, services, how I provided them, and for the people around me came from when I started to train the security courses. I used to train the courses for people to get their like their licenses to work in the industry, and um, there was a model, my customer care model. Um, which I developed because I thought I felt what was on the course just didn't really break it down. So I would ask people, instead of thinking of customer care, how do you treat the people you care about? And so I would ask them what qualities and they would give me the qualities and in a room full of guys, I was like, there's something missing here, guys, on this list. And it was like, mm -hmm. and then there'll just be this silence. And I'm like, there's something really missing here, guys. I've just really tried to encourage and pull the word out of them. And I'm like, okay, who's got kids? And people who had kids would put their hands up. I said, how do you feel about your children? And then the word love would come because it's their child. It's easier to say, but to say um, love customer, love what, no. Um, but then how I framed it was, okay, imagine if you're treating people like you respect them, you love them, you listen to them, you care for them, you, you look after them, all of these qualities that they would um, tell me and I would write down on a flip chart. What effect does that have on the person that's receiving that and then they would then give me the answers and I'd say okay so if you did that at work what kind of venue are you going to have what kind of place are you going to have what you did that with your colleagues what kind of work environment would you have and again they would give the answers and it's very j just by taking them on that journey and introducing love into it they saw the power of it to make better environments more harmony more peaceful more friendly you know an environment that they would look forward to going to work to so I mean, I first did that in probably about 2007. And then when I saw the power of it, I was like, well, I've got to keep it. I've got to keep doing this because it's changing their mindsets, you know? And then um, because the company I worked for, we were doing the training for them. A lot of those guys would then come in to work with the, the security company I worked for. I would then end up working with quite a lot of them, mentoring and coaching them. But then I could see the the tools that they were, that were passed on to them in the training, how they were using them and the benefits they were getting from using those tools and using the love and being more um, of a human being when working rather than a security person and with the identity that goes with, I'm a security person. If they just identify themselves as, a, I'm a security person, I'm a door supervisor, I'm a security guard, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bodyguard, I'm a close protection officer. There's a stereotypical mm. identity and behavior that goes with that. Mm. So to, to take them away from that, it's no, you're a 
human being delivering a service 